Hello, my name is Andrew Sims. I'm the head of research at Arden. Uh, I'm joined today by Nick Dashwood Brown from Anexo to discuss uh, Anexo's business and the outlook for the group. Uh, hello, Nick. How are you? Hello, Ali. Nice to nice to see you. Just to start off, can you can you describe the core credit hire business of the group and and how that works for viewers? Sure. Um, so our credit hire business specialises in acting for the non-fault motorist, and we reply we provide replacement vehicles for people who have had an accident which isn't their fault uh, until such time as the vehicle has been repaired or else the value of the vehicle has been replaced uh, on, in a write-off situation. We specialize in impecunious claimants. And what's an impecunious claimant? An impecunious claimant is somebody who does not have the wherewithal to provide themselves with a vehicle through their own resources. These people tend not to have, they, they, they don't have any money, they don't have any credit, they have no credit cards, they're not able to get back on the road, and that's where we help them. The associated part of our business, which is the legal services business, uh, then recovers the hire and repair charges from the at-fault motorists insurers. So we are a dual business, credit hire on the one side, legal services on the other. And, and why do customers come to you? And what benefits does the direct capture and integrated legal services model have for your business? The majority of our customers are not in a position to contact their insurance company when they have an accident which isn't their fault. And there are three main reasons for this. Um, and they're based on the fact that they want to keep their insurance costs as low as possible just to keep themselves road legal. Number one, they're extremely unlikely to tick a box to say they'll get a replacement vehicle in the event of an accident. Number two, they're liable to be third party fire and theft. And perhaps most importantly, they, they tend to go for the highest possible excess that you can in order to keep their premiums lower. So if you're, in a, if you're in a car that's worth £1,000, you have an accident that's going to cost £500 to repair, but your insurance excess is £1,500, you have nowhere else to go. So we specifically target those people who will go not to their insurance company, but they will go to the garage down the road, what we call, what my chairman calls Fred in a Shed, uh, who's a two-man garage. He works on his own. He's, you know, he's got an inspection pit and a ramp and so on. And normally they will say to them, look, I've had a crash here. How much will it cost to get this back on the road? If it is one of our introducer garages, of which we have about 1,150 countrywide, then they will say, well, actually, don't worry about that. Get in touch with these people, and they will provide you with a replacement vehicle and pay for us to do the repair for you. And why is a net so different to other credit hire and legal services firms? Ultimately, we have a, we, we have a fully integrated service throughout. Now, there are a few credit hire firms out there who, who try and do what we do, although nobody does it on the scale that we do with our number of garages and, and, our, and for that matter, our 25-odd sales reps who travel the country talking to these garages. By and large, uh, there are a few credit hire firms who uh, tend to be more on the small side and, and they're more interested in personal injury claims than we are. We do do PI, but it's not the major part of our business. Uh, in terms of the way we operate our business, most credit hire firms have a problem when it comes to collecting the cash from the other side, from the at-fault motorist insurance company. They can put a vehicle on the road, but getting paid for the cost of putting that vehicle on the road and the cost of the repair is extremely hard for them. And that's where our uh, legal services division comes in, that when the insurance company, as tends to be the case, doesn't pay the bills that we send them, we pass them to the legal services group, Bon Turner, who pursue them for that cost. And ultimately, if they don't pay, it's very straightforward. We issue a writ and um, uh, and initiate court proceedings. And how has lockdown affected your business and, and how is it recovering through the second half of this year? Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm pleased to say that actually it's, it's, it's affected us very little. Um, really, we've been open for, for business throughout. Both the credit hire business and the legal services businesses are, are um, cited as essential businesses under government guidelines. So we have remained open throughout. Um, in terms of the credit hire business, um, we, we just make sure that our vehicles are, are more thoroughly clean when they come back each time before they go out to another customer. And so we obviously have the usual fail safes on that. Um, but in terms of the number of vehicles we have on the road, there really hasn't been much of a difference. We've seen a good recovery in that. It did drop off to start with. Um, I think in the first week of March or the first week of lockdown in March, which I think was was from the 20th onwards from memory, um, we put about a third of vehicles on the road that we would normally do in a, in a normal week. Now, we're, that we're back to normal on that. And in fact, in terms of vehicles on the road, which is uh, the major 
KPI we look at to measure how we're doing in the credit high business, we're currently standing at record levels. So there's been a good recovery there. In terms of the legal services business, um, we allowed people to work from home as they wished, um, but we opened the office 24 hours a day so that you can imagine that a lot of our claims generate a ton of paperwork. So if people needed to come in and get a file, they could do so should they wish to at two o'clock in the morning. And that did happen to a certain extent. Um, but now we're back to full-time working. We have people back in the office full-time. Everybody's got their perspex screens up and so on. And we have uh, the normal precautionary measures in place. In terms of the courts, uh, the courts have remained open throughout. They've been operating actually very efficiently via telephone and via Skype where necessary. And really in a civil action, which is what we specialize in, you would expect things to, to work relatively straightforwardly. In a criminal action, obviously you need witnesses and you need a defendant and so on. Fortunately, that's not our remit. So actually, we've, we've, we've come out extremely well uh, and pretty much business as usual. And it's worth bearing in mind, we haven't fur furloughed anybody during the lockdown period. Great. And uh, just moving on, the, the group has invested in recruiting in, in the Bond Turner Legal Division over the course of the past uh, two years. What are the benefits that you're now seeing from this? We have two leaders, really, we can pull in, that we can pull in the business. If you look at the credit hire business, that's the bit that's capital intensive for us. So every vehicle we put on the road, that's going to cost us a certain amount of money, maybe in terms of paying the repair cost to the repair garage who get paid in full and upfront by us, uh, maybe in terms of the, the, the associated costs of, for instance, the garage recovering the vehicle from the crash site and so on. So that's money that's going out. And we have to keep an eye on the fact that we, we, we need to make sure that we're not allowing too much money to go out of the door. Uh, in terms of overstretching ourselves in vehicles on the road. The corollary of that is the legal services business, and that's cash collections. We account for cash there, and basically, at the end of every day, we get, a, we, uh, we get an email which tells us how much cash has been collected that day. In other words, what the checks are that are dropped on the mat in terms of settlements by the insurance company. Now, we have a backlog of approximately nineteen to 20,000 cases. We put about 6,000 vehicles a year on the road. So if we never put another vehicle on the road, it would take us about three years to work through the backlog that we've got. And the only thing that stopped us working through that backlog really is just the headcount that we've had, as well as the slightly lengthy process that it takes to go through the court system. So it's a straightforward equation for us. Um, more legal, more litigators in our, in, in, within Bond Turner equals more settlements, equals more cash collections. So we've worked very hard at expanding the legal services business to increase the cash collections. As cash, cash collections increase, that allows us uh, to put more vehicles on the road uh, subsequent to that. Now, can you briefly describe a typical case in terms of the process and the timeline you go through? Sure, I mean, under normal circumstances, if somebody has, a, has, a, has an accident, somebody runs into them, they will go to their garage and the garage will refer them to us. Uh, if it is a repair job, then uh, we try and get a replacement vehicle out to them within 24 hours, certainly, uh, within 48 hours. And at that point, we either embark upon the repair or the vehicle is declared a write-off. And that decision is not made by us. That's, a, that's made by a court-appointed um, engineer. So both sides accept uh, his verdict. Uh, you know, either it's, He comes along and says, either it's a repair that's going to cost, I don't know, a thousand pounds, or he says, this is a write-off and that's the write-off value. So that's the principle we work, we work from. There is, now, there is then a 90-day portal uh, for both us and the other side, the other side's insurers. And there's an electronic portal where all the documentation goes in. That includes witness statements, that includes diagrams, that includes whatever we want. So we know where we are. Now, by and large, uh, we tend to work with cases where there is a, a, an admission of liability on, on the part of the other side. But we certainly take on cases that we believe there is a good chance that we're going to win any potential litigation. At the end of 90 days, Basically, we ask the insurance company to pay us their money, and, and 99 times out of 100, they ignore us because that's what insurance companies do. Uh, they, it, it, I don't think it's an official policy, but certainly in our experience of 30 years of doing this business, they're not keen on writing checks. So they tend to ignore us, and we continue to get in touch with them. If they ignore us further, then it's very straightforward. We apply for a court date to sue to get the money back. Now, a court date at the moment, if I apply for a court date today, I'm probably going to get given one in about 15 months' time. And that's a function of just the number of courts there are in the country and the amount of business that they have. It's a, it's a large time frame, and obviously we'd like it to be shorter, but that's just a function of the way the courts work. But we know at that particular stage when we issue the writ, 
that in 15 months' time, if it goes to court, then we will be able to prove our case and we'll get awarded the, 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 the um, repair costs plus damages. What happens then within that 15-month period, we would expect the uh, other side solicitors to start negotiations on reaching a settlement before we have to go to court. So at some stage during that process, we will look to settle. So effectively, the timeline is we know what the cash will be uh, at the end of a 90-day period. It's just we have to wait a long time to get it. But during that period, that money, as far as we're concerned, is ring-fenced. So it's not going to get whittled away by time uh, alone as we wait for the court date. Great. And the Volkswagen emissions litigation has received significant press in recent months. Can you describe Anexo's activities uh, in, in regards to this area and the current status of the process and any potential impact on the group? Sure. So uh, as, as some of your viewers may or may not be aware, um, VW have, uh, have been involved in, in a very variety of lawsuits regarding the fact that they cheated on emissions tests in their vehicles uh, between that period, I think between 2007 and 2015. Um, there are a number of cases of um, class actions being brought against Volkswagen. They have already admitted liability and settled in a number of other jurisdictions, the US, Brazil, and Australia being the most obvious ones. And there's currently a class action going on here against them. Um, we have a total of, uh, the last time I looked, it was about 11,000 claimants against Volkswagen. Um, Volkswagen have denied the, the claims so far, uh, but they have been to the Court of Appeal and lost the appeal against the fact that they had a case to, to, to answer, and they have been refused leave to appeal to the Supreme Court. So ultimately, the courts have been fairly scathing about them and said, really, we don't think there is a case to answer. So under those circumstances, we are continuing to attract uh, claimants against Volkswagen, people who have owned a vehicle uh, made by Volkswagen between those two dates, and we're continuing to do that via social media, via our group records, because obviously we've had a number of Volkswagen owners who've been customers of ours in the past. What will happen with this is that uh, as and when the issue either gets to court or reaches, as we believe and hope, a settlement, then we will be entitled to a proportion of the damages awarded to each claimant. On top of that, we will be able to claim our legal expenses and there will be potential uh, other, other damages on top of that. Um, our legal expenses are expensed uh, on a daily basis, they go out through the PL in the wage packet in the, in, the, in, the, in the wage slips as normal. So we're looking potentially at a significant um, capital injection in, in terms of, of revenues. Now we don't think this is going to settle in financial year 2020. We think it's much more likely to be in FY 2021. And I don't really want to give a quantum on this, but take 11,000. The historic uh, settlement figures uh, across various jurisdictions have varied from anywhere between about uh, 700 pounds sterling to about 4,000 pounds sterling. So you can pick any figure you like out of that, divide it by 50% and add on the legal costs. That's a significant amount of money for us. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind that VW are not the only manufacturer to be involved in this. Um, we, we, we've been doing some work with Mercedes uh, and you can, I'm sure you've seen on social media, there are other people yeah. also pursuing claims there. Uh, and there are other manufacturers who are also in a similar situation and we're currently researching those as well. So. It's not the main part of our business, but we do operate an advocacy division, which is led by my chairman, Alan Sellers. We do do a number of cases like this, other cases involving professional negligence, clinical negligence, and so on. And that's a part of our business which is going to grow. Thank you. And uh, any final comments for potential investors in an EXO at this time? I think we're fairly unique in what we do, in the sense that uh, there are other credit hire groups out there, but... Historically, the problems they've always had has been in terms, in terms of collecting the cash which they're owed once they've made the rentals that they make. Now, we're unique because we incorporate a legal services group. And therefore, if insurance companies don't pay us the money which they owe us, it's very straightforward. We litigate. We do it every day, and every day we win. It's worth bearing in mind that less than 2% of our cases, when they go to court, fail to settle in our favor. Um, so you know, we have 30 years plus of experience in this particular field. And I have to say, we're very good at it. I think we're on an undemanding earnings multiple. I mean, you'll know you'll know that because you've done the numbers on it. And um, at the moment, you know, with the share price as it is, we most recently raised money from the city at £1.25. Uh, that was a vote of confidence by a number of, uh, of major institutional investors. And I believe the premise remains intact. Great, Nick, Nick uh, Dashwood Brown, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Andy.